Good day, ladies. Welcome back to our second encounter with a theme that says time and space for divine strategy. Uh, to, to understand that, we need to go back to our previous session, our previous encounter where we looked at developing some divine strategies. And to take us through that, I thought maybe it's important that uh, we look back and reflect on what were the divine strategies that we talked about. And I think maybe it's important for me to recap the strategies that we talk about in order for us to look forward in terms of how are we moving forward when we develop in those strategies. The first one said, control is not the goal. And when we say control is not the goal, we, may, we looked at Exodus 9 verse 1, where Moses was actually asked to go to Pharaoh, where he was asked to, to, to tell Pharaoh that God says, let my people go. And in that, it shows us that actually Mo Moses was not in control. And for him to be able to be in power and be in control, he, that was not important. But actually, he had to allow himself to know that that is not his goal, to be in control. The second strategy that we look at is to, to learn to trust God. And learning to trust God is whatever it is that he's doing is for our own good. And in Psalm, we looked at Psalm 13, verse 5, where I trust in your unfailing love is what it said there. And if we trust in God's unfailing love, it simply means that whatever it is that He you go through, you've got to have faith that actually is for your own good. He's always with you. He's supporting you. The third strategy that we looked at was to create an image of that end love. And we looked at the book of Matthew 16, verse 24 to 26. But what the book says to us, or what is the message that we get here, is actually self, um, self-sacrifice is actually God's way of finding yourself. And if you give yourself and you sacrifice yourself to what is required, you actually are finding who you are, getting to know yourself. The fourth strategy that we look at was actually challenging false belief. And how do we challenge false belief? We look at the book of Romans 12, uh, verse 2 where actually what we looked at is don't conform to the patterns of this world. And if, you say, if you're not conforming to the patterns of this world, you need to be transformed and renewed. And linked to that, we move to the fifth strategy, which look at discovering your true identity. How do you discover your true identity? Is actually being transformed to his image. And to do that, we looked at the second Corinthian, verse 3. Um, Verse 18, where we're looking at how do you be transformed into his image. The sixth strategy, we actually looked at have the right relationship with God. And when we looked at that, we looked at Matthew 22, verse 37 till 38, where it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And having that right relationship with God is what was important in here. And the seventh strategy that we looked at was you need to also have the right relationship with others. And that taking us back again to Matthew 22, verse 39, where it says you must also love your neighbor as you love yourself. The last strategy that we looked at was actually having the right relationship with ourselves. And in that, we look at the book of Ephesians 5, verse 29, where it says you need to actually nourish and cherish your own flesh, just as Christ did to the church. That gives us some ideas on some of the strategies that we looked at, and we also had uh, some few questions where we looked at, and some of the questions that we looked at was looking at how do you, how do I make my plans and goals of life align into this divine strategy. We also looked at terms of, we acknowledge the fact that we only have 24 hours in a day. So how do I make time for this and how do I align my strategies into, into divine strategies? And those were some of the reflection questions that we look at. But today I also want to give you an example of how I balance my personal goal with my divine strategy. So balancing my personal goals was I was a single mom, with two teenage kids, and I also had was the only one working, the only adult responsible for them. I was studying 
during my studies, doing my PhD, I was also working. And all those uh, things that are actually going into my personal goals. And if my personal goals are, I have to be a good mom, I have to provide food on the table, I've got to pay rent, I've got to make sure that the needs of the children are catered for. I've also got to make sure that at work, I actually deliver productive, be productive at work. I also have to make sure that in terms of my study, I also need to progress in my studies. How do I manage this? And yet here I am wanting to develop a divine strategy. So the question is, in these 24 hours, how do I bring all this together and make them to balance and work? And I had to sit down and, and unpack my 24 hours. How do I manage my 24 hours? The best way of managing my 24 hours is looking at, okay, what it is that is doable. So the first thing that I was able to do was to start looking at how do I spend quality time with my family? Not quantity, but quality time. And for us, because I had teenagers and we were all busy and running some school and I've got extramural activities, I was a parent. So we had the only time that we could all be together at the same time was dinner table. Between seven o'clock and eight o'clock during dinner table, we had, and that was the quality time where we connect. And during that quality time, certain things were, no cell phones were allowed on the table, no gadget were allowed on the table, TV was switched off, and in that way we had got engaged, we connected with one another. <clears throat> How was your day? What were the things, what were the highlights, what were the lowlights of your day, and what it is that you take taken from this day? That is one way. Linked with that was also trying to make sure that we bring in the word of God into their household. So what did we do? It was in the evenings, we would share in terms of the word of God. And the reading of the scripture was not me doing that. It was everybody's responsibility. And that made it easier because some of the, the kids had to prepare themselves for the reading of the word of God. And then they would give us the scripture. So we would take this, somebody would take the lead and take the scripture and read the Bible and take us what it is that the message that we... And that is, again, aligning it into the daily activities of the household. And then, where do I get time to study? If I've got to be from 8 o'clock until 4 o'clock, on 5 o'clock, I have to be at work. And then at 5 o'clock, I come home. Where do I get time to study? So the best time was I realized that my kids, between 10 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock, they're sleeping. No activities is happening outside the household, and there's no responsibility for me. That would be used as my time for me to study. And that would be the time that I literally used to, 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 to study and make sure that I create the space for my own personal development. But I also needed to have time where I actually have time with God. And the question is, when is it the best time for me to have that connection with him? So I looked at my time because at six o'clock in the morning, everybody is up, everybody's running around and it's getting ready to. So do I use the six o'clock time? where I make sure that everybody, so I would wake up everybody just before six and they get ready. But as soon as they go out, I take my time to have my divine moment with the Lord. But also before I go to bed, that is how I meditate to go to sleep. Because again, that is the time. that. So I have split my time in order to make sure that all the daily activities are actually aligned, but also my personal goals, the divine strategy, and my responsibilities are also aligned in this. And by the time you finish, you know that you have managed your day well. Each day you've got to reflect what have you done. Each day you've got to reflect how thankful you are to God. Each day you've got to reflect that what it is that I needed to do and for my children. You also have to. Make. So the question that I have, I balanced my personal goals and with my divine strategy? Yes. I have incorporated and made my personal goals and my distract to match as one. Well. It was not easy to do that. It was a process that I had to learn. And practicing doing it consciously on a daily basis, it simply means within six weeks of practice, you actually have managed to learn something. And you learn a skill that becomes part of your lifestyle. And in that way, you would have managed. Have I learned my divine strategy with my personal aspiration? Yes. My personal aspiration and my deep have merged into being one because I have connection with God and God is guiding my life and my family and everything that I do is actually 
grounded in him. Personal changes and behavior in order for me to achieve these divine strategies, there were changes in my life where I needed to start looking at the friends that I have, start looking at the time that I spend with all the things that are actually not, not building me to where I want. So I needed to change in terms of the friendship, the connection, the social media, and the people. Sometimes you've got to cut people that are not building you where you want to. Sometimes you've got to develop changes and network that are actually building you to where you want to go in your in your divine strategy. So then slowly but surely, I started seeing that the changes of friends have moved from just kind of people that you just talk about anything and everything to the kind of people that we actually are an inspiration, are building you up, to having the kind of friends that are actually, the friends that are actually building you in terms of your faith and supporting you. And when you have things that you are battling with, you know where to go because you've already got a network of sisterhood that you are building. I'm still building that network of sisterhood. I'm still building that network of strong women who are actually strong in terms of faith, building in terms of my divine strategy. So somehow I'm saying it's a process. You've got to build stepping stones and know what it is that you need. And in those stepping stones, they must be strengthening. They must be adding value. So friends that are not adding value into my life, into my divine strategy have been cut off. And yet I'm building more and more network that are actually strengthening me to get into my into my divine strategy. This is how I'm strengthening my divine strategy. These are the commitments that I'm making for myself. And this is what I'm pursuing. And I hope in that way, this has actually would trigger some of the discussion that you ladies will be taking for taking forward for the strategy discussion. And how do you build your divine strategy? during this time and space because I think with the lockdown we were able to do a lot of reflection and we're able to take forward some action. Thank you very much ladies.